Hello. Welcome back to the Mindful Monday series. Oh, maybe we should do this more often. I'm kind of loving these short little episodes, getting to hang out with you twice each week. Plus, I love any time we can take a moment with mindfulness, with meditation, like even just being here talking about it. It feels like we're invoking that energy, that stillness, a little bit of that contentment, and just, you know, some kind of basic okayness. We're really not here to be better. I want you to know that. You don't have to be any better than you are. No further along whatsoever. I want you to be with you exactly as you are right now and to help you find a state of real, genuine, authentic okayness with this version of you. That's what we're up to. In fact, today, this is going to be good. Today, we're going to talk about compassion. So we've covered awareness. We've talked about presence in the first two episodes of this mini series. So if you haven't listened in to those yet, you can go back, grab those, take a few moments with those concepts. And today we're going to turn our attention towards compassion. So there's a few undercurrents to the work that I do. Just things, concepts, teachings that kind of infuse everything that we're learning and practicing here together. Things like kindness, self-trust, building a relationship with yourself, awareness, which we've talked about here, accepting reality for what it is, and compassion. Compassion is one of those really foundational pillars. It's something that's kind of assumed in this work that we're like always working towards compassion, that we're always building compassion, both with others and with ourselves, all the directions of compassion. So Kristen Neff literally wrote the book on self-compassion. It's called (laughs) Self-Compassion. Her follow-up book is called Fierce Self-Compassion. They're both really beautiful. They're both really valuable books. In the first one, she wrote, compassion is, by definition, relational. Compassion literally means to suffer with which implies a basic mutuality in the experience of suffering. The emotion of compassion springs from the recognition that the human experience is imperfect. Just stay with that for a moment. The emotion of compassion springs from the recognition that the human experience is imperfect. What? Right? Yeah. This is true. We don't need compassion unless things go sideways. Compassion shows up or the longing for compassion anyway, that desire for compassion when things get tough, when we struggle, when we're in pain, when we feel terrible and get confused and lose the plot. If you're having a great day, things are totally going your way. Compassion probably isn't what comes to mind. Compassion springs from the recognition that the human experience is imperfect. Like, you know, anxiety, overwhelm, stress, self-doubt. The human experience is imperfect. And the emotion of compassion springs from there. Because here's the deal. You cannot hate yourself calm. (laughs) You cannot beat yourself into peace. You know this because you've tried it, right? We all have. We've tried telling ourselves to get it together, chill out. We've asked really great questions like, what the hell is wrong with me? And that doesn't take us where we want to go. My hunch is that's because it isn't steeped in compassion. There's no acknowledgement there that the human experience The imperfection of it, right, is here upon us. The icky emotions, the tricky situations, the difficult people, the hard times, and what's needed is compassion. So I looked up the definition of compassion. 
And I like this. The dictionary says, sympathetic concern for sufferings and misfortunes. I mean, right? Suffer with. Sympathetic concern. I'm with you. You're suffering. You've been dealt some misfortune and I'm with you. Or, arguably more importantly, I'm suffering. You're saying this to yourself. You're speaking to yourself here, okay? I'm suffering. I've been dealt a misfortune. And I'm suffering with you, self. I have a sympathetic concern for me. This ties in with our sense of belonging, that we want to be with and be supported by others, including ourselves. This ties in with that sense that what we're thinking and feeling and experiencing, it's not that weird. It's actually pretty common. This is why humans need art. Art encapsulates human suffering in like a painting or a poem or a song or a movie, and we suffer with. We have sympathetic concern for. And when we're suffering and we find that perfect song or poem or quote, there's that expansion inside. Oh, yes. I'm not alone in this. Some other person somewhere else maybe in some other time or country altogether, has felt this way. I suffer with them. Compassion, the imperfect human experience. All right, so we've looked at awareness and presence. We've talked about the simple fact of showing up, paying attention, and being here in this moment must be present to win, right? (laughs) Now let's add compassion to that mix. Could you be kind and curious and friendly, both with yourself and others? Not 100% of the time. Jeez, (laughs) like go easy. But could you point yourself in that direction? Could you encourage a sense of curiosity and friendliness? Could you ask questions like, I wonder why they did that. I wonder what's going on with them today. I wonder why they reacted that way or said that thing. Could you assume best intent to the degree that feels believable and reasonable? All right. Could you give people the benefit of the doubt and assume they're doing their best? Their best may suck. (laughs) Sure, I totally hear you. But maybe it's all they've got. And hey, let's just be honest. Sometimes my best is awful. It happens. We've done that dance. Perhaps it's an off day. Maybe they're exhausted. Maybe they're distracted with a family member's illness or overly tired because of some stress at home. We don't know. Curiosity and friendliness. A dose of kindness and compassion. I can suffer with you. I can see your pain and I can sit here and be with you in it. Now, one quick note for all my fixers out there. Compassion is not fixing. You aren't being compassionate when you go swoop in and try to solve someone's issues and problems for them. Don't try to take their pain away. That's not your job. And it's not in their best interest. Like even if it's your kid. And let me say that again. Even if it's your kid you're dealing with. Taking people's pain away isn't your job. Compassion is. I see that you're hurting. And I can hang out here with you in that. It's okay to hurt. And you've got this. And I'll be right here. That's compassion. So one last note on compassion as it pertains to anxiety. I mentioned this earlier, but I want to close on this here. When I ask people what they want, when I ask people how they want to feel, people who come to me who are struggling with anxiety and feeling terrible and lost and stuck, 
their answers can mostly be boiled down into, I want to feel better. It's pretty much what they're saying. They're not all looking for happiness or peace or calm. Most people honestly just want to feel okay. They just want to get back to some middle ground, a more neutral place. And compassion is the way there. So I told you last time that presence and anxiety, they're kind of mutually exclusive experiences, yeah? You can't be in one and the other. And if you are looking for the path into presence, right, like the exit ramp out of anxiety, it is compassion. Be kind to yourself most of all. Start there. We'll get to the other people eventually. But this has to start at home with you. If you're kind of fumbling around trying to cultivate presence, the road there is compassion. You cannot hate yourself there. You can't berate yourself and talk down to yourself and expect to show up in presence. Be kind. Show compassion And you'll find that you are well on your way towards presence. They all kind of start getting interwoven here, right? It's a beautiful thing. All right. So that's it for compassion. Next week, next Monday, we're going to talk about practice. Turns out you got to practice this stuff. (laughs) It doesn't happen automatically. It doesn't happen accidentally. And then... Then we're going to start talking about how we can do this together. So excited for that. All right, everyone. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I'll see you again Wednesday for the next MVP podcast on the regular feed. And until then, please take care.